I'm Allie, and I'll be talking about Canvas and a little bit of WebGL today. Um, so what is Canvas? Canvas is a HTML5 um, element, and you can use it to draw graphics using, um, well, JavaScript in this case. Um, we can draw graphs, make photo compositions, create animations, um, do real-time video processing and rendering. Um, and the canvas element is like a container for the graphics, and then get context is a method that returns an object, um, and we can do a couple different contexts. Um, the canvas element creates a fixed size drawing service and exposes a couple rendering contexts. Um, usually it's 2D when used on its own, and WebGL uses a 3D rendering context. Um, Okay, so this is how we set up Canvas. It's really simple. You just put the Canvas tag in your HTML, and it has two attributes, width and height, and you can set them to whatever, how big or small you want your Canvas to be. And usually it's by default 300 by 150 pixels. And then inside either a script tag or a separate document, you can put a function that will get the Canvas element by ID and then set the context. Um, so this is a little example of how it would look if you just did something simple. So we are down here entering the canvas tag, setting the height and width, um, the style, so it has a border. Um, and then inside this script, we're creating the draw function, and it will be called um, when the body loads, or when the document loads. And yeah, right now we have a 2D context. So how do we draw? We can draw rectangles, triangles, lines, arcs, curves, all using the canvas grid. And one unit corresponds to one pixel on the canvas. Um, and the origin is the top left corner, the coordinate 0, 0. Um, so canvas on its own only supports one primitive shape, uh, rectangles. So you can create a filled in rectangle. Um, a stroke rectangle or a clear rectangle, and the X and Y is where it's going to be on the grid, and then the next two are the width and height. Um, and everything else in Canvas is creating using, using paths and combining them. Um, so these are lists of points connected by lines, and they can be different shapes and colors. Um, to create a path, you usually you have to begin the path, then um, call a different path method, and then you close the path, and then you can either put a stroke on it or fill it in. Um, so here's an example of how to just draw simple rectangles. So we set up the canvas, we get it, we say 2D context, and then fill rectangle will create this outer rectangle, which is filled in black. Um, clear rectangle will create the clear rectangle, and then the stroke rectangle will create this one inside. And then path. Um, so to draw like this heart, which seems kind of simple, it's actually a bunch of steps. So you begin the path, and then on the grid you move to these two points, and then this curve is the one down here. So it starts at the path that you're current, the point that you're currently on, and then these two numbers are this first little point, and the next two numbers are the second little point, and then the last two numbers are the end. Um, so if you've ever used Illustrator, it's kind of the same type thing where you can move these to change um, the shape of the arc. And it's kind of confusing to draw a heart, because not like Illustrator, you can't just move them and see what's happening. You kind of have to do all of these different ones. And then the end will end here, oops, sorry, and then you'll fill it in. And that creates that heart. Um, so we made a shape, <laughs> which we can easily do in Illustrator, I feel like. But um, actually, you can, can I switch? Oh, yeah. So you can create cool things like this um, clock right here. Because um, when I was like filling it in and making these shapes, I was like, that's a lot of shapes that I can easily make in Illustrator. What am I doing? But then this example is really cool because it uses the real time, and this clock is actually going to be accurate to the time. Um, and because you can do simple animations in Canvas also. Um, so now we can see what we can draw with WebGL. Um, WebGL is a JavaScript API for rendering 
3D computer graphics and also 2D. And so the first thing we do with WebGL is basically the same thing as Canvas. We just have to set up the canvas um, and then render it, but the context is going to be WebGL instead of 2D. Um, and this will allow us to create shapes in 3D. Um, so WebGL is based on the OpenGL API, <coughs> um, which I found a little bit confusing, but uh, we are working in 3D sh space, so, that so we need shaders. So these will be kept in the HTML. I'll show an example of the code later. And then fragment shaders, so establish the color for each pixel. And then vertex shaders um, defines the position and shape of each vertex. Um, and then another thing we'll see in the code later is we're creating and binding and then sending all these buffer datas. And then it will, like, for the vertices and then the shading and the lighting, and um, then we will render the scene. And that's where we can, like, play with the perspective and the animation. <coughs> um, so I will give... Okay, here is some sample code. I guess I'll show you what I made first. So I made a cube that rotates. <laughs> um, yeah, and <laughs> that's all it does. <laughs> um, and it's a lot of code for it. So I followed a demo um, because it's kind of confusing with the vertices and the matrices and all of the math that I don't really know. So first, um, right here, we're just start starting and rendering the canvas, which is basically the same thing we've seen in the past couple examples. And we're clearing everything before so that we have an empty canvas. Um, this is the function start that will be called in the um, HTML. And this is what I was talking about before with the shaders, um, the fragment shaders and the vertex shaders. Um, then we are going to... <coughs> uh, here we set the context, so we say WebGL and fallback experimental WebGL. And then we initialize buffers, and inside this function we're going to have vertices, so we're creating the front face of the cube, the back face, the top face, the bottom face, the right face, and the left face. So that will build our cube, basically. And then we're going to set um, normals so that we can um, compute the lighting so that when the cube is um, rendered, we can have accurate shading and stuff like that. Um, so the fr again, the front, the back, the top, and the bottom, and the right, and the left. And then we're going to set the texture coordinates. Um, and each time we're like binding the buffer, and then we're putting the buffer, the we're putting the texture coordinates into a full array and passing it to the buffer data. And then we will set here we're initializing the texture, so here's where um, you put the image that you want to render um, the texture of the cube. And then um, this is the function draw scene that will ultimately draw it. Um, and here we're dealing with perspective. And then we get to some matrix stuff, um, which is just, we used, um, in this demo they used a um, another library that like did a lot of the matrix math for us so that we didn't have to deal with it as much. So just briefly look at this because I don't think I can explain it that well. Um, yeah, so all of that eventually will render this cube and we can change the direction that it rotates and the, um, some of the vertices to um, change the way it looks and <coughs> some different shapes. So that's what I made, but a lot of people made a lot of really cool things with WebGL. Um, <coughs> for instance, you can do something like this. Um, <laughs> there's like all these libraries of people that made really <laughs>